Hey, what is up guys? Matt here and maybe this story sounds familiar to you. You come to your doctor because you're like, doc, my hair is falling out. I need to grow some hair. What should I do? And the doctor is like, hey son, here's finasteride. Take this. And then you're like, cool doc, how long should I take it? And then he's like, one year and then come back to me. And then you're like, cool, uh, how many hairs will it grow? Because you know, I have this thinning patch on my crown. What should I expect? Should I expect like full regrowth, full hair loss stabilization? How many hairs are we talking about? And he's like, you know, I don't really know, man. Like just come back to me after a year and we will reevaluate. Hopefully you're not going to get any side effects, but just come back in a year. Here is your prescription, son. And then you don't really know whether you should be like sadly going through that year not knowing what's going to happen with your hair or to your hair or whether you should be like happily expecting the end of the year, the end of the 12 month mark when the hair will appear and it will look much thicker. So that's exactly why I decided to create this video to kind of approximate but also quantify the amount of hair that finasteride is in fact able to regrow on a target area of your scalp where your hair is thinning. It's going to be science-based. So if you're interested in the answer, in the final answer, like how many hairs are we talking about that finasteride is able to regrow, make sure you stay around until the end of this video. Let's start. This video has been brought to you by GoFiber. Enter your pictures and win a one-year supply of GoFiber. It's easy to enter. Order a free sample, take a clear before and after pictures and send them to selfie at gofiber.com. Hey, welcome back guys, Matt here and you're watching my hair loss and hair transplant related channel where it's all about stopping our hair loss, getting our hair back and hair transplant. So if you're new, make sure you subscribe and also visit my website mattdominance.com where you can get my free ebook, five things I wished I had known before my hair transplant. Can help you a lot with your hair transplant research if you are a newcomer and you just try to make your feet wet with the hair transplant research. As far as the studies, scientific evidence on finasteride, there are not so many studies as I thought that would be like comparing the baseline hair count levels and the hair count one or two years after using finasteride. Not so many as I thought. Now with all that side effects thing, post finasteride uh, foundation, post finasteride syndrome foundation, there are so many studies that are actually observing the safety profile or trying to reevaluate the safety profile of finasteride again. And there are actually so many studies on this topic coming out more than there are the studies on the actual efficacy of finasteride. We know that the finasteride is efficacious, but we still like want to know better, like how many hairs will I be able to regrow as a Norwood 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 or diffuse thinning Norwood 3 uh, when I use finasteride. So in this video I'd like to quantify this for you. The first study on a finasteride uh, that was kind of observing the hair count before and after it was a placebo controlled trial, a two year two-year trial where 1,500 plus guys were involved and they were taking finasteride one milligram. The hair count at the baseline was 876 hairs. However, not per square centimeter as usual, but per a circular area with a surface of 5.1 square centimeters. 876 hairs, by the way, it's, is a lot of hair. For five square centimeters, it's almost as a healthy person has. A person that doesn't have any androgenic alopecia or any hair loss whatsoever. Because they also did a study back in 1999 when they were trying to like optimize the FUT uh, strip uh, procedure and they wanted to know like uh, what is the average number of hairs that a healthy person has in the donor area. That's the area that is non-affected by any thinning uh, or occipital region. Uh, and they found out that the the average number uh, ranges from 124 hairs to 200 hairs per uh, square centimeter on the occipital region. So in this study, it seems like the average uh, hair count per square centimeter was at the baseline, pretty much within the healthy range that a healthy person should have on uh, the scalp on the square centimeter, okay, if it's not affected by any hair loss. We can observe 12 0.2% increase in hair count in the first year. So the hair count pretty much went from 876 uh, hairs per five square centimeters to 983 hairs. And that's the 12.2% increase. And in the second year, there is additional increase in hair count of 3.5%. So the hair count went further from the year number one on finasteride from 983 hairs onto 
1014 hairs on uh, the vertex area not on the front not on the mid scalp not on the hairline i don't know how uh, it's going to work on the hairline in terms of like exact numbers like regrowing you that amount of hair or that amount of hair i have no idea because there is no such study that would have observed the hair count increase on the hairline like precisely as precisely as this study okay so there you go if you are a norwood two three four or even a five and the vertex is just mildly balding very likely that this is going to be the response also in your case okay let's come back to the original question guys how many hairs will finasteride be able to regrow for you if you start right now and take it at least for a year unfortunately unless you don't experience balding on the vertex it's hard to tell because as you see there is no study that would kind of observe the effect of finasteride on the hairline or mid scalp and uh, kind of compare the hair count on the baseline and uh, one year after because all the studies that there that are out there like uh, that kind of observe the hair count before and afters uh, by using finasteride they always kind of set the target area for the vertex somehow i don't know why okay i think what they should do now i mean what i would consider like really interesting study actually would be if they would choose like a hairline as a target area and they was, you would use like topical finasteride and derma roller maybe and compare it to another group which would be just oral finasteride and placebo so it would be like three groups that would be like pretty good study uh i would really like it and i would know, like to know what would win in this situation would it be like oral finasteride or topical finasteride and microneedling on the hairline that would be a cool study now that was the study number one. The study number two only includes 212 men ages from 18 to 40 and it's not two year study but only one year study okay but they were also taking finasteride one milligram so it's very relevant and the study have been also observing the hair count before and after and on top of that not just hair count like the total hair count also the antigen telogen hair count and the antigen telogen ratio. At the baseline of this study, these 200, uh, how many guys, 212 men, they had an average hair count of 200. 200 was the treatment group and 196 was the placebo group. Now we are talking about square centimeters. So what are the results? The treatment group went from 200 hairs at the baseline per square centimeter onto 207 hairs, okay? That's not a lot. It's about 3% or so. You can calculate it precisely. If your hair count is close to like great, it's like uh, 180, 90 or even like 200, there is not going to be like so much new hair growing, okay? Because you are at the top almost of your potential. So if you are somewhere like you have probably lost maybe 20 percent maybe 30 percent of your original hair count per square centimeter you can experience similar response close to what the guys in the first study experienced so yeah that was pretty much it guys uh, on topic of how many hairs can you expect uh, finasteride will grow for you in a year so if you like this video make sure you give it a thumb up uh, comment below if you have any questions you can follow me on instagram you can subscribe to my youtube channel if you are new and you like these topics and you want more of these types of videos uh, then make sure you subscribe and also make use of uh, matdominance.com slash mentoring if you're somebody who's already uh, managing your your hair loss and you have already been on finasteride or even minoxidil and other treatments for a year or even more you are considered more stable um, hair loss case and also hair transplant candidate and that's why I'm talking about hair transplant because I offer one-on-one -on -one consulting as far as hair transplants go explaining you what is and isn't possible with your first or next hair transplant what is the doctor that you should be going to i'm advising you what are the best doctors that you should consider for your hair transplant and pretty much educating you on all the things and pitfalls that are out there for you if you have never done a hair transplant and you want to make the best possible decision i'm gonna guide you and help you do the right steps towards getting your first hair transplant and 
achieve an amazing result like many of my clients already did okay so make sure you check out mattdominance.com slash mentoring if you're interested in that i'm going to be looking forward to receiving your application and then shortly after that i'm going to reach out to you ask for your photos and then we're gonna uh get on a call together okay so for all you guys who uh, enjoyed this video thank you so much again for staying tuned until the end and uh, i will see you soon take care